Hey everyone, thanks so much for tuning in to this video. In this video, we're going to talk about how you can supercharge your Kubernetes experience using the Kubernetes dashboard offered by DevTron. We all know that Kubernetes by its very nature is something that's really complicated to use, right? Especially when you go into production, you've got all these hundreds of different resources and it just gets really overwhelming to manage. So Kubernetes dashboards come into the picture to try and reduce some of that extreme complexity. Who are you listening to right now? I'm Siddhan. I'm a tech and fitness nerd and I'm working as a product executive at DevTron. I'm also an organizer for the local cloud native community group at NASIC and these are my social handles. Feel free to come and connect with me. We can talk about Kubernetes dashboards, Linux, and pretty much anything tech related. Would be happy to strike a conversation. You might be thinking to yourself, oh, not another one. And that's the state of Kubernetes dashboards today. There are just a ton of different dashboards. All of them have something unique about them, but every single dashboard might lack certain features. Kubernetes workloads by their very nature are very dynamic and they are ephemeral as well. Your pods may just restart out of the blue without any sort of explanation and you need to be able to have visibility into all of those activities, right? Furthermore, you're probably deploying your applications using Helm or GitOps tools such as Argo CD or Flux CD. Many Kubernetes dashboards out there do not actually give you visibility into these three types of applications, whether you've deployed it by Helm, Argo, or Flux. They'll show you the resources that are deployed, but you will have no idea that they are deployed with these three methods. Imagine you're trying to delete a particular deployment that's controlled by Argo or Flux. It just keeps recreating, and until you realize it's using GitOps, you will have no idea why it's not getting deleted. Handling multi-cluster deployments is also quite challenging. There are solutions out in the market which can ease some of these problems. But the issue with them is that you need to introduce many tools to get a solution for all of these problems. And that also leads to another learning curve when you have to learn all these different tools for managing different things. It's also difficult to set the right level of RBAC or access permissions for your cluster or the dashboard itself. Many dashboards do not even have collaboration features. You can install the dashboard locally, but you would need to provide the cluster information through either your cube config or some other way. And different members of your team would not be able to sit and collaborate on fixing a single problem or creating a new deployment and even managing the configurations for various workloads applications as whole well can become pretty challenging. So what exactly are we offering? Eftron is offering you with one Kubernetes dashboard for all things Kubernetes. I'm just going to briefly touch upon all these points and I'll talk about them more in depth when I'm showing you the dashboard itself. So Devtron will provide you visibility into every single cluster resource whether it's pods, deployments, your storage resources, etc., You have the ability to set fine-grained access control or RBAC. Every single Kubernetes resource is logically grouped into different sections, which makes it easier to find the particular type of resource that you're looking for. DevTron is also giving you visibility into resource utilization by the cluster and applications, you get multi-cluster support and that's not limited to just visibility. You can also create deployments on multiple clusters. You can manage your nodes and pods directly from the dashboard itself. So you don't need to context switch. You have cluster terminal access and you can also manage the Helm release lifecycle. It's also just one single dashboard for all your applications, whether they are deployed via Helm via Argo CD or via Flux CD. I've given you a very brief overview of what DevTron can be. Now we'll take a look at the hands-on. You'll get a feel for the actual dashboard and you'll automatically be able to see how DevTron can be useful for your own use cases. So now let's head over to the dashboard and let me show you everything that we have to offer. 
Right here, I'm on Devtron's login page. You can set up an SSO to make it easier for different members of your team to log in to the Devtron dashboard. We have support for setting up an SSO using Google, GitHub, GitLab, OIDC, and a couple of other methods. Just to make sure we don't run into any permission issues, I'm going to log in as an administrator for this demo. First, I want to show you the different ways for setting access control. So right here in the global configurations, you can see that we can set different user permissions. Right now, there aren't any users over here. I will create a new user and I will show you the granular permissions that you can set for individual users. So I can click on add a user and give my user an email. So let's say we have a user with the email address give kim at devtron.ai. And let's say I want to give them permissions for managing Helm applications. I can select a project, let's say Devtron demo, and I can select which cluster do I want them to have access to. Right now, I will just set the default cluster and I can select exactly which application do I want to give them access to. So let's say that Kim should have access just to Nginx. I can set that. I can set the type of permission and I can save it. Or if I wanted to give Kim access to just one specific Kubernetes resource, I can do that as well. From the Kubernetes resources, I can once again select my clusters, my namespaces, the API group for my resource, my resource kind. And finally, I can select either an individual resource or a group of different resources. And similarly, I can set the role, whether Kim should be able to only view those resources or do I want to give admin control? Maybe Kim is my cluster owner or I want to give Kim root access to my cluster. So I can even set her permissions to super admin. So she'll be able to do literally anything with the cluster. Once I'm satisfied with the permissions, I can click on save and a new user named Kim would be created. And here you can see Kim has been created. And you'll also get the last login time. So right now I'm logged in as the admin. Hence, it's showing me three minutes ago. The system user or Kim as a user has never logged in. So it's showing me never. Now, if I have multiple different developers in my organization, it would become really tedious to, to add every single developer over here and then assign them the same group of permissions again and again. So to make that easier, we have the permission group. Permission groups allow me to give the same set of permissions to my different users, which makes it easier for me as a cluster admin to assign the specific groups of permissions to each individual developer. So let's say this is a group of developers and I want to give them access to only the specific deployments which exists in the micro caves cluster. I can configure my permissions and I can select done and I can save this permission group. Next time I create any developer user, I can simply assign them this permission group and they will have access to all of the deployment objects in the micro caves cluster. Then we also have the API tokens. Within your applications, maybe you needed access to a specific Kubernetes resource for whatever reason. You would need to authenticate that application to the particular resources in Kubernetes. So for that, you can generate an API token and assign it to your application. So let's call this API token as a developer token, and I can set the expiration for seven days. So after seven days, this token will be rendered useless. And just for seven days, I'm going to give this token super admin permissions. This is something really dangerous and something very insecure to do. But just for demo purposes, let's generate a super admin token. So this token is generated and now I can pass this over to my developers and they can plug this into the application code as either an environment variable or a secret variable. And the application will be able to get super admin access to the cluster. And like I mentioned in the slides, 
Deftron also allows you to connect multiple different clusters. So in this environment, I have got two clusters connected. One is my default cluster where my Deftron is actually installed. And the second one is a micro KH cluster, which I've created on a VM. I will quickly touch upon the different applications in Deftron. So you have the ability to manage Helm applications. So if I filter out according to clusters, I can see all the Helm applications which are deployed on the default cluster. Similarly, I can see all the Argo applications which are deployed as well as all the Flux applications. We'll look at this a little more in detail, but first I want to show you Deftron's amazing resource browser. The resource browser is something that we have created to give you visibility into every single component that exists within a Kubernetes cluster. Let's go ahead and explore the micro KH cluster and I will show you everything that you can do and all the visibility that it provides. So right once I come into the cluster, I can go into the overview tab. Right off the bat, you can see the different resource utilization metrics that are shown. I can see my CPU usage, my total capacity, my request. And similarly, I can see the same stats for memory as well. I also have a readme where I can put information about the cluster. Let's say, for example, I wanted my team to get access to a particular doc for this cluster, how different applications are managed, the different ingress classes and node groups which are available in this cluster and whatever information. I can edit this readme file and I can add all of that information in here. Similarly, I can add a tiny description for my cluster as well. What is my cluster about? Maybe I have a cluster for running LLMs. So I could put that short description right here. Heading back into the node overview, this cluster is just a single node cluster. So let's explore this particular node first. You can see that you get insights into the different resource utilization for this particular node as well. You can see all the different labels, annotations, and taints that are attached to the cluster. Right now, there are no taints, so there is no scheduling constraints. But if there were any taints, you'd be able to see them here. And if you scroll a bit, you can see every single pod that's deployed on the cluster as well. On the left, you can also get some information about the node, such as its status, roles, Kubernetes versions, and some other information. What if your node was having some sort of errors in it? What if it was failing? In that case, I can come and I can check the node conditions as well. Right here, I can see that everything is up and running, but if there was some sort of a problem, maybe the kubelet was not ready, I'd be able to debug that right here itself. Checking the node conditions is just a part of the debugging process, right? you probably are going to have to go and dig deeper into the cluster to figure out the exact problem. So for that, we offer a cluster terminal as well. So with this, you'll be able to spin up a terminal and use it to find and fix any errors that may exist within the node. We also provide a number of different useful images. For example, we provide the Kubernetes utilities, Netshoot and a Kubernetes CLI but you can also enter a custom image name. For example, I can simply type in busybox and this will create a busybox container for me. Coming back to the nodes, I can also look at every single event that has taken place within the cluster. So these right here are all the events. There could have been some warnings, there could have been some error events here as well, and that would help me debug the cluster. Every single resource that is deployed in this cluster is grouped into its own logical section. So for example, under workloads, you've got things like the deployment and pods. Under config and storage, you've got the different config maps. Networking has all the networking related resources and so on. So here you can see all the different pods which are running in the cluster across every single namespace. You can also filter it out across a specific namespace. So for example, I want to see the apps which are deployed in the Argo namespace, and it will show me all of those applications. Maybe this particular application, the Argo Redis pod is not working as I expected. I can simply click on it and I can see it's live manifest. Oftentimes it may happen that your pod is running into some sort of resource constraint. When that happens, the easy solution is to just give it more resources. 
So you can come here, you can edit the live manifest of this pod and increase the amount of resources that this pod can use. Similarly, if something else is wrong with the pod, I can check its different events and I can also see the different logs which are a part of this pod. If this pod had multiple containers in it, I could select the individual container that's that I want to see the logs of. Here you can see that this particular pod has an init container as well. So I can see the logs of this init container as well. And I can also exec into the pod in case I want to run some sort of commands, fetch some data within the pod or debug the pod. You can also select your preferred shell, whether it's the simple shell, bash, PowerShell or CMD. When you deploy an application to production, you usually create a very minimal image that contains only the application code. I mean that you do not even have a shell inside. How are you going to debug an application that has got no debugging utilities? It doesn't even have a shell and you just cannot exec into it by any means. For that, DevFront provides you with an ephemeral container. So the ephemeral container is just a temporary container that is injected into the pod and you can select the image that you want in it or you can also give your custom images and you can select the target container where you want this ephemeral pod to run. So I can use this ephemeral container to debug my particular pod or my application. And in here, I can run my commands and figure out what's wrong with my application and fix it. So the resource browser is how DevTron provides you visibility into all the different resources that are running in the cluster. You can manage your entire cluster, the nodes, and also get a good overview of the cluster as a whole. Next, let's look at the charts too. When working with Kubernetes, applying individual manifest for all your application resources can become very tedious, especially when you have got multiple different components. So the ideal way to deploy an application like this would be to package it into a Helm chart and deploy the Helm chart to the cluster. Defron has a number of different Helm charts which you can deploy to the cluster. Let's say you wanted to deploy a Postgres chart for working along with your application. You could simply search for it from here and select the particular chart that you want to deploy. In case your chart doesn't exist over here, you can very easily add your chart. Simply click on source and click on add and you can add your chart to the list of all these different charts. So let's go ahead and deploy this particular Postgres chart. I can configure the different values of it. I can put in an application name, for example, Postgres. I will select my project and my environment and I can simply deploy it. If you had an actual application that depended on Postgres, you could enter the Postgres username, password and everything from either the GUI view or you could directly go and edit this YAM. And once you have the configuration set up, you can easily go ahead and deploy the chart. You can see that you can see that the Postgres chart is in the progressing state. The actual pod is still pending. And once this pod is successfully deployed and running, it will show the application status as healthy. I briefly touched upon this a bit earlier in this demonstration, but now let's take an in-depth look at all the different application management methods that are present in DevTron. So right here, you can see all of the different Helm applications. And this is the Postgres chart, which we just deployed to the cluster. Let's inspect the Postgres chart and we can see that it is successfully deployed and all the pods are running. We can see the different workloads that are present in this application, the networking resources, the different config maps and storage, similar to how you saw within the resource browser. You can also scale the workloads. Maybe it's holiday season and all of your developers are off. It would be a waste to let a particular application stay running, right? So in that case, you can scale it down to zero and that way you're saving on a lot of system resources. Let's say you wanted to make some updates to this Postgres application. You can simply head over to configure and you can change all the configurations that you wish to. 
So for example, let's say I give this a password, a very, very secure password. And I increase the size of the persistent volume. And I can do this. I will update and redeploy the Postgres chart. And you can see that the application is in the progressing state. Now I will wait for a few minutes for this to become healthy again. And here you can see that my chart has been redeployed. I know that this is the latest chart because of the age of this pod. Now let's say I want to configure this another time. And this time I will do the configurations by via YAML. I can compare this with the configurations of a previous deployment. So for example, I wanted to compare it with the very first deployment. I can see all the different things which have changed in this deployment. And I can also see the deployment history. So within the old deployment, I can see all of its different configurations and the Helm generated manifest as well. Let's say for instance, something was wrong with the newly deployed version. I can very easily deploy this old version by simply clicking on this deploy button. Apart from the Helm applications, Deftron also gives you support to look at Argo applications and Flux applications. So right here, you can see that I have two Argo applications. Inside the guestbook UI, I have got all these different resources running and I can scale them as I want. If I check my Argo dashboard within the guestbook UI application, I have all of the same resources. If I was to deploy any new application via Argo, all of them would appear in Deftron's dashboard as well. Similarly, I have a couple of applications deployed via Flux as well. And let me show you these Flux application using Flux's CLI. I can create a cluster by terminal. So I can go ahead and install Flux using this simple command. Now that it's done downloading, I can simply do flux get all and you can see all the different resources. These exact applications are the ones which we saw within the applications view of flux. Similarly, if I deployed any Helm application in the cluster using the Helm CLI, I would be able to view all of those applications in the Helm dashboard. Teflon also has support for an OCI registry. You can push all your different charts to your preferred OCI registry. And these are the registries which we support. So to give you a quick recap of everything we covered in this short demonstration, Deftron will give you visibility of different workloads deployed across multiple different clusters. It will let you deploy and manage the Helm releases lifecycle. You also have fine-grained access control with SSO and RBAC. You can also view the insights of your clusters and debug the nodes using the cluster terminal. You can also easily configure different applications and spotting the configuration drift is also quite simple since Deftron highlights them. And rolling back to a previous version of the application is also quite easy. Just one single click and you're on a previous version. There's also insights into various Argo CD and Flux CD workloads. And we also have support for OCI registries. Before ending, just a quick note. We also have a couple of advanced enterprise features such as advanced resource filtering using CEL expressions. We have support for cluster and Helm applications catalogs. We can also help you easily share the cube config between all your developers so that they can easily get kubectl access to the cluster. We have support for time-based access control. So a particular user will have access to the, a particular user will have access to the dashboard only for a limited amount of time. We have support for air gap clusters. We have an interesting feature, which is the pod restart snapshot. So let's say that you had a pod running and for some reason, the pod dies out and a new pod gets created in its place. You can take a snapshot of the pod right as it got deleted. So you have all the different logs of it, which can help you debug exactly why the pod was deleted. And with the enterprise features of Devtron, you also get Clustered Connect via SSH and Proxy. And that's all the great features that Devtron offers you for managing your Kubernetes workloads. Do join the Devtron community. These are our links to 
our GitHub, our Discord, and our documentation. The QR code will land you straight on our GitHub page. So do check out the project and we're open to any feedback. If you think there's something that the project is missing that should be added, or if you want to suggest a new feature, please do join the Discord server and we will be more than happy to hear your feedback and improve the product. Thank you so much for watching and hope to see you in DevFront's community.